Hello, my fellow drumsticks. I'm Snare. And welcome to today's video in which I will teach you how to make kicks. Before I get into that, welcome to anyone who's new to the channel. As I said, I'm Snare. I'm a music producer, a Romanian one, of four years. I have experience making all sorts of electronic genres and orchestral music and video game music and have worked making soundtracks for games and such, making my own sample packs and sound design for games and other stuff alongside videos on YouTube, my own music videos and fun stuff that you can listen to by checking out my channel. So, as I said, today I'll be showing you the basics to making a kick. This is sort of a beginner tutorial, but not necessarily only oriented at beginners, but also oriented to people who are more advanced and want to actually get their bases down on creating their own drums, be it for their own music or be it that you want to sell your sample packs to a company or want to be hired or you just want to up your sound design skills. This is the great introduction tutorial. Not only that, but it will be followed by more advanced kick tutorials and other tutorials. What's great about learning how to make kicks is, first of all, it's somewhat easy if you actually learn how to hit this sweet spot with processing them and making them. From here, you can take this knowledge and sort of, in a sense, apply it and wrap it to other types of drums, specifically drums with membrane, right? So like snares or other types of drum hits like toms. I don't know. Another thing that's great about this is a lot of the techniques that I use can be applied to them as well. And by that, I mean processing techniques. These techniques can be used for symbols as well, which I will be covering in the future. So now that I've explained that, let's start by talking in theory what a kick is. You know, you've heard it in music before. In most electronic music, especially, kicks are these sort of deep, thumpy hits, right? These drums that help you stay on rhythm. And they're somewhat essential for most music nowadays, right? You, you don't hear much music without kicks, right? If it's a song, it has a kick, generally. If it has drums in general, it has a kick. It's rare that you see a song without a kick, right? To show you some examples, I, I've recently made some drums for a sample pack. And here are some of the kicks, so you can actually know which sound I'm talking about if you're more of a beginner. Really nice, really deep. So, what is a kick in real life? It is this sort of round chamber, right, made of metal that is empty on the inside. And on the front, it has this sort of membrane that's some sort of material that's a little bit elastic, just a bit. And what you do is you hit on the pedal in your drum kit, right? The pedal brings up a little hammer that has this sort of tampered off end to it that hits the actual kick. It hits the membrane. And because the kick is designed in that way, it's somewhat big, right? The membrane vibrates and it creates this deep thump. Now, from a physics point of view, right? From the actual sound point of view, the way the kick works is it's a release, a very quick release of energy, right? So it vibrates really fast and it slows down as the membrane gets stopped by the stuff it's latched onto, right? Which is the outer casing. What's happening is basically it makes a quick burst that both in volume, it goes down really quick and in pitch. So it goes very quick. And it also has this, at the start, this very snappy quality to it, which is the initial hit of that pedal of the little hammer hitting it which is the actual sound of the hammer hitting the kick. The hammer being called an exciter and the kick being a resonant body. You can also change the exciter, which is going to change the actual tone of the kick because hitting it with different materials is obviously going to change the way it's hit, gives it different tones and such. It's also going to change how fast it decays and such. Yeah, so how we're going to approach making this drum is by splitting it into multiple sections. First off, we need to create that, that thump, right? That, which we're going to do using a sine wave, which we're gonna pitch down really quick. That's gonna create the dushk. Then we're going to layer that with the snap, which we call a transient. We're going to make that very short release of noise. And then something to give it a bit more characteristic is going to be something like noise or just some sort of layer 
in between it. That's going to be processed with the kick. That's going to be really quiet. And then we're going to compress in with the entire kick. And the compression is going to make the transient be very snappy. It's going to attenuate the body and it's going to bring out that juicy middle sound, middle noise that we're adding. And all of this is going to be shaped using envelopes and LFOs. Now that we've talked about that, let's actually get into making this kick. And before I do, I need to explain that I will be making this in Faceplant, which is a somewhat advanced synth. Someone who is more of a beginner is maybe not going to be able to. OK, sorry, I thought just got a new update and I was not aware they added a sound font player, apparently. Uh, yeah, which is cool. Uh, so. Let me go to my synthesizers and here we have Faceplant. It doesn't matter what synth you use. That's important to understand, even as a beginner. What matters is that you understand what I'm doing. If you find yourself having to copy everything that I'm doing, it may be something wrong with the way you're learning or with the person that's teaching you. You need to understand sort of everything behind what's happening so you can replicate it in other synthesizers. Because any synthesizer on the market is capable of creating a kick. You're capable of doing anything with most synthesizers, right? Unless it's something very specific that you know, that's like specific to that synthesizer. But generally, you can recreate most stuff in, in any synthesizer and with some creativity. You can make a kick also in Vital. I have Vital, but I'm not as good at using Vital. You can also layer in multiple, in multiple synths, right? And then just use the, the mixer to just process them together and create something nice. It doesn't matter, right? In the end, what you're going to do is you're going to render that kick and just put it in a folder and then drop it in your tracks the way it is, not in real time, because that would eat up all your CPU. So let's start by making the basic body of a kick. First, I'm going to introduce the sign, as I mentioned. And I'm going to give it sort of a body. So this is how the sign sounds. I'm going to bring it down so it creates the, the sub that I want. And now I'm going to shape its volume first. Let's say it decays in around 275 seconds, right? Add a little bit of a hold. So what's happening is we have a little bit of time here in which it has time to actually do its major release and pitch. And then we're giving it a bit of time so it actually reaches the end of that pitch envelope. So you can hear it does sound like a kick. And you can change the curve of the decay envelope to but this is good for me all right so that's the sign with its volume and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a different envelope i'm going to bring the attack all the way down right we want the pitch to start right at the maximum and then we want it to drop to the bottom so the sustain is going to go down and then we're just going to make it sort of punchy like this and here is where you can start playing you can make it somewhat extreme so go like two octaves you can see it already has that funky texture. Or you can make it a little less extreme like this. For something more, you know, just bassy. I personally enjoy the more funky ones like this. I'm going to show you how to extend this pitch shift without actually doing anything to this in a second. So that's nice. Then I'm going to add a new group where I add my transient. So generally, the transient you're going to make with noise. Why I'm saying this is because I make my transients extremely short. So like this short. You can go even shorter. Right. And the reason I'm doing this is because I just want that initial, very initial click. Right. You can have it more extended like this. But in my opinion, it doesn't sound as great. And I do something to actually give it that sort of extra bit of transient later. Next, I'm going to add some sort of body to it, which for this for this video, I'm just going to use noise. You can use a lot more stuff in here. So similar to the kick, this sort of has to follow the, the body, right? So imagine this is an articulation of the body. When the membrane gets hit, the sort of entire thing reverberates inside of the chamber, right? In a sense, it creates this weird sort of timbre that the reverb has, right? 
we're trying to recreate that with the noise. So the timbre isn't ever going to be any longer than the actual body, right? So I'm going to make this a little bit long like this. Right now it's very loud, so I'm going to instantly turn it down. And you're gonna see that you're gonna have to turn it down a lot. And you may say right now like, oh my God, that's so quiet. I cannot hear it at all. But once I start processing it, it's gonna be brought up by the compression and the distortion and it's gonna make it really tasty. Let's get into processing the kick. So this is how the basic kick sounds. And what I did was I added a sign, which I shaped using an envelope and gave it the characteristic body of a kick, which can be played with, right? To gain different types of kicks, either longer, right? Longer kicks, like an 808, right? Or shorter ones, very, very short. If you enjoy that, you can play around then with the pitch. So you can have extreme pitch like it did here. Well, this is not really that extreme, but you can go even more extreme, which I personally dislike, or you can go more mild. Yet again, I don't really like that that much. And you can extend its length or shorten it. Whichever is your fave um, way of doing it. I then added a transient, which is very, very extremely short, as you can see, just five milliseconds to add the click. And it's just noise. And then I added a little bit of noise just to add some sort of texture to the actual, you know, body of the kick, which I turned down in volume a lot. And I made it sort of follow the shape of the body. Not perfectly though. It doesn't really matter that much. Now let's start processing it. First, I'm going to distort it. So the distortion is going to bring the body of the kick up in a sense, right? Add some more harmonics to it. And because the transient is in here and this noise is going to sort of force those in to the sign, which is going to add a bit of crispness. Let's just bring this up. And you can hear it already has this nice texture. So I want to shorten it a little like this. And you can make it a little bit less, less abundant if you like that or change the mode. So after you distort it, you can run it through something like a compressor. I'm going to use, yeah, this compressor does pretty good. And I'm going to bring the threshold down until, yeah, until it actually hits it. I'm going to bring the ratio up a little. You can turn the release down. Gonna make it sound cool. You can add a bit of attack or make it lower. And add some makeup. And what you're basically doing is by adding this attack, you're sort of making it so it doesn't affect the transient, but it affects the body because of the release. Because the release is so short, it sort of sounds more aggressive. You can make the release longer and you can hear it takes a little bit longer for it to actually, you know, go down. But you can go really aggressive. I personally like this, this place, uh, a little bit lower. The ratio is the amount that you're compressing. So it takes four decibels for it to actually go up in volume by one. So it needs to push this threshold right here by four decibels until it, it physically goes out as just one. That's sort of how it goes. It's a little bit weird to understand, but yeah. And the threshold I just brought down until the kick was actually hitting it. And I don't know if I mentioned, but with the makeup, I'm pushing the kick after it's been compressed up. So I sort of have some volume to work with. Next up, I'm going to be distorting it a bit more just to bring out some more of that nice quality. But this time I'm going to not make it as loud. Next, you can use something like a transient shaper, which in a sense, it's similar to a compressor, but it obviously only has control over the attack and the sustain. You don't really need a transient shaper for this, but I'm going to show you anyway. So I can bring up the attack and bring the sustain down just a touch to shape it all. And what this does is it makes the initial transient louder and it brings down the body just a bit so it has a bit more of a kick shape. And the speed I'm bringing it up just so it's a bit faster. But what this does is it makes it actually peak. So you can see in here it's peaking. And the way I'm gonna fix that is by adding a hard clip. It's basically just, it stops right at the clipping point, which for me is gonna be zero decibels. So it's not gonna go louder than this. And it's going to stop right here. And it's going to distort above that. 
it's annoying with the with the killer heart stuff because it's not really perfect, but it's good enough. So we've got this nice kick. And if I really want to bring out that body from it, I can use something like a multiband compressor, which in here in Faceplant, there is none of that. In Vital, you just have the compressor by itself, which you can use and set to OTT mode. And outside of that, you probably have OTT because it's free. And that's exactly what I'm going to use. So here in Dynamics, there is an OTT preset. And you can hear it adds the noise right back in which is the reason why you want it to be so quiet. In phase plan, you can play with the position, which is going to change sort of the way the compressor reacts, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is because in OTT, you don't really have that choice either. And I'm just going to mix it in. And you've got a pretty clean kick, right? Uh, you can see its shape is a little wonky. <laughs> and uh, that's fine. I'm going to show you how to make it look really nice and be at, at its loudest if you want that. So, ooh, my leg. Oh God. <laughs> Before I go into processing the kick like that, I'm going to show you how to extend the sort of pitch without actually uh, doing anything to this one. So you want this quick burst of pitch and then you want a longer one. So you just make a second envelope that's a little bit longer and you make it affect the pitch of this just less. And you can hear it's doing exactly that. So this is without and this is with. Personally, I like it without, so yeah. But you can you can use this to make more interesting things. For example, you can make this very, very short. And now obviously, because this is so short, it basically has no pitch, pitch deviation. And I'm just going to add it back in with this. And it's, it's pretty cool. Nice. You can also change the shape of this basic wave to something else. So this is a triangle, right? These sound like shit. <laughs> but you can. And inside of this processing chain, you can actually add filters and EQs to give it more characteristics. And that's how you sort of get the variation of your kicks that you want, right? By playing with the pitch deviation, by playing with its volumes, by playing with the levels of each of the elements that you add to it, by changing the effects and what you're doing to it. So you can have a kick that's only compressed and isn't really distorted. You can have a very distorted kick, etc. And now let me show you how to process this so it's sort of at its maximum loudness or at least at a nicer sort of shape because when you're going to be delivering this to a sample pack you want it to have that nice nice shape you see it's very nice very round and it sounds loud so i'm just going to put a bunch of them no matter the kick it always has that nice shape so as i said i'm going to route this kick into one of the, my mixer channels right so looking at it, you can sort of see that it has this very clicky start and then it goes down and then really low. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add the fruity wave shaper and this is going to add like a clipper. The reason behind that is when you run the sound into it above this point, which is zero decibels or the maximum volume that your mixer fader has, right? It, it it just goes like this, it flat lines. So if the volume goes above like this, it's just going to be flat lined here, which right now you can't see because it's not going over zero, right? But what you can do is just boost it in, right? Until it distorts. So you can see it's getting closer and closer. So at this point, it would be like a clean kick. If you like this texture, if you like it like this for, I don't know, housey genres. <laughs> But this is how you would make it even louder. Sometimes one is not enough. And what you can do instead of using the pre, you can take an equalizer or something I, or a gain or something and just boost it with this in decibels. So let me just show you right now, picking at minus 1.5 decibels. So technically by boosting it just 1.5, it's hitting zero dB, right? And it's peaking because of this. It's stopping right at zero dB. So the more you push it, the closer the body gets to where the transient is. You can see it's a little bit more squished, even more. And now it's like very squished. But every time you do it, it sort of gets closer to having this distorted sound to it, which you may not like. I, I personally don't. So personally, I think this 3 dB range is really good. And if you want to maximize it without having that distortion, you can use something like a limiter or just a simple compressor 
I'm going to show you how to do it in Maximus. Now, because Maximus doesn't by default use linear phase EQing to filter its sounds, you can see it's technically above zero dB because the equalizers in here are sort of affecting its phase and making it have um, volume deviation from what the original volume was. So what I can do is make a linear phase and you can see it now it's like almost at zero dB. It is a bit different because of the quality of the linear phase and it's never going to be perfect but it's definitely going to be better than normal EQing. The problem with this is that it can add pre-ringing, which is an artifact specific to Fourier transforms, sorry, to linear phase EQing, and it's nothing you can do about it. It can smear your transient to make them sound really bad. So it really depends on you how you want to do this. If you like it, you can use Maximus, but then you have to be careful about the way you use your compress uh, compression curve, and you may consider adding a bit of attack or look ahead even to preserve the quality of the sound. Attack basically makes it so the way it pushes down usually is just like this, like it goes straight down and then releases. With attack, it doesn't go straight down, it goes like this and then sort of like an inverted envelope. Look ahead just adds a bit of delay. So if the kick hits right here, it would be delayed by a few milliseconds. So that will allow space for the actual transient. Both of these are similar, but generally you can use look ahead, very short bits, right? Four milliseconds and then a bit of attack to get that nice texture to it. The release you can turn down, you can turn down a lot, but you have to keep in mind that the more you turn it down, the more it's going to distort the sound when it reaches bits like this. Similar to the wave shaper, the wave shaper stops the wave right at zero, right? So the more the wave pushes through, it sort of sounds distorted. That's what a very fast release time does as well. Because it's so fast, it's literally affecting the wave the same way distortion would be. And it's going to act the same way a clipper would. And you don't want that. So the more you turn it up, the more it stops affecting that. It has to do with frequencies as well. And because of that, 50 milliseconds is the lowest you can have it without any sort of distortion, but depending on how deep your sound is, you can pull it off a little lower and you won't really notice. If I turn this, uh, the pre up, it doesn't really sound that much because it also has noise in it and such, but you have to be careful. So yeah, that's how you would use Maximus. Personally, I'm just going to use a compressor. Let me just use the fruity compressor. I don't really use this very often, but I guess I can use it now. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to keep the threshold at zero. And I think this is an in gain. Yes, it is. So I'm just going to boost the gain in until it looks nice. I'm going to add a bit of attack. Now what you can do is add more gain and then only mix it in. So with, without. And you can hear it's pretty nice. The difference between using this and Maximus is with Maximus, you have a bit more control over the actual shape of the sound. And when it's a more dynamic sound like it is now, now you can see it has a lot more dynamics. You can actually shape it really well. But for my case, just simple compression works. And it has a really nice shape to it. Now, if you want to actually do some more creative stuff to it, you can actually use distortion and give it nice shapes. I'm going to show you this with Destructor because I don't care to draw in a shape myself. Destructor has some really nice distortion presets, but you can get like a preset, let's say uh, abrasive. Oh, good God. So this is what it does to it, right? So you can just give it a bit more uh, creative texture. So that's cool. You can also EQ and filter it. Generally, you want to put the equalizer at the end, but the problem with that is it's going to change the actual volume of it. So it's not going to peak at zero and it's going to play around with the, um, the phase because of the way EQs are, non-linear phase EQs are, to be more clear. So what you can do is add just a wave shaper and then just play around with the EQ. So let's say I want it to be a bit more clicky. I like this frequency or whatever, I can boost it. But I don't like, let's say, I don't like this, so I'm gonna take it down a notch. Maybe I like the sub, so I boost it all. And now I have a sort of different sound. And if I remove the wave shaper, you can see it's yet again clipping. And what I'm gonna do is just boost a little. And now you've got a very consistent kick. 
that looks very clean. So if you look in the EQ, it looks very nice. So what I'm going to do is just take on Edison, set it on now or on input, hit the record button and just play it a few times just to make sure that I have a few you know, variations of it in case of anything. So you just listen to them and then select the one that you like. Let's say I like this, this one. What I'm going to do is just select the areas that I don't like, hit delete, and then I'm going to zoom in at the very start, right? Where you can sort of start seeing it's doing some movement. Select that and then move it to the side. Oh, and to explain the way I'm seeing both the spectrogram and the wave shape is I go into here and you can go dual view. So if I turn that off, you see it removes that. But I go dual view and also spectrogram on. And you can see all my all my stuff. I use the charcoal one, but there's more colors depending on what colors you like. So as I was saying, you just select the very start of the sound, making sure not to cut any of it out, you move it to the side and then hit delete. Then here at the end, just sort of listen out to where the volume stops and you leave a bit of space where stuff is sort of quiet. So you can just select this point and here you can't hear anything and you just fade it out. This is the fade out button. Just fade out a little bit. And then when you go to the transient here, we just select the first few samples and I'm going to fade those in. The reason I'm doing this is so there's no clicks at the start or at the end of the sound, which can be caused by the very low frequencies. Sometimes there can be very, very low frequencies like 20 hertz or even lower, which are called, uh, I forgot what they're called, DC offset. Good God. Because they're so slow, they're basically like, it takes this entire window for it to oscillate once. And that means that the entire wave shape is basically here, centered here, which means that this hits the peak here faster, right? And that creates weird distortion and such that you don't like. And what can also happen is it can create clicks at the end or at the start of your sound when you're playing it, especially for subs. And you don't like that because you know, you sort of like your sound being clean and you having control over it, right? So we make sure that none of that is happening in here. But DC is generally removed by just adding just a low pass like this somewhere in your sound at 20 Hertz is enough. It doesn't even matter how much of decibels it has because it just removes it automatically. So this is your kick. It's very clean, right? Mine is in C. You can play it at different pitches. So G sounds nice. And after you render it, you can just drag it in your DAW, look at it, see if it's good for you. It's good for me, right? And you can process it again if need be. You can make it, if you like that, whatever. You can pitch it. And then what you do is you make FL small or just go into your folders and you just drag it on your desktop. That's your kick right there. It's hitting nicely at zero dB and it's right here. And then you just rename it somehow. Um, Kick one wow, no. so awesome. What's important is that these stay at WAVs. Generally 48K is good. I work in 41.1. As you can see, it's 41.1 kilohertz. Make sure that they're at least 24 bit depth because you don't want to compress it in a project and then for it to have a lot of ugly differing noise. If you don't know what dithering is, don't worry about it. Outside of that, the only thing I would suggest is if you have this for a sample pack, depending on the genre you're working with, which is actually probably all genres ever, you're going to want to take this, turn it down by six decibels. Most modern sample packs do this because nowadays in music, people mix at minus six decibels. Well, they always have, right? But for convenience sake, it's always marketed as more convenient to have something they can just drop in your project and it's ready to be mixed right? It's just a perfect volume already. It's the perfect sound. You don't need to do anything to it. And this is a quality check type of thing. Now this kick looks horrible <laughs> at minus six. Its shape is a little weird, but it's, you know, it's, it's cute. It's cute, right? It's a cute little kick. If you really want to shape it nicely, you can use Maximus and such. So yeah, that's how you make a kick. Let's retrace my steps and then I'll explain to you some other ways of making your kicks and things that you will be able to do in the future. First, we created a sign that had a very quick pitch deviation and volume, volume envelope shape, which follows that of a real life kick. Then we added a very clicky transient, which you can extend if you like it. And we added a very quiet, quiet, quiet noise. Sometimes you can make this louder if you're not using really extreme compression and distortion. But for my sake, it had to be very quiet. 
because it was boosted a lot. Then we went through processing, which included distortion, you know, in very small amounts, layered, compression, yet again, that allows the transient to seep through, more distortion, transient shaping, which you can use at any point to make it clicky, multiband compression, aka then, to make the kick sound more better, I boosted it into a clipper, which for us is just an untouched wave shaper, until it sounded good. Then I compressed it and mixed that in with it. Sometimes you may like it being louder, whatever your preference is. I EQ'd it so it had the sort of spectrum that I like. I then made sure that it was not clipping, so I just used a clipper. And I recorded it in Edison, made sure that I faded it out nicely so there's no audible fade in it that is to make sure that there's no dc weirdness and i took it and for quality sake i turned it down six decibels but for kicks like this to be honest you don't need to for other types of kicks you can do it and with this basic knowledge you can basically make any sort of kick you can imagine by just playing with the stuff that i showed you some stuff you can do for this is for example playing with convolution playing with different noise sources layering them with real life kicks or just processing outright real life kicks getting weird transients or just kick shapes playing with the eqs and sending it through distortion which can give it interesting textures making all sorts of different eq shapes like I said, using different types of distortion. So more extreme, less extreme, like I showed you with Distorter. Generally just having fun. You can basically make a kick actually out of anything if you're good enough. So when you start consistently making these kicks very, first of all, your shape is nice and they sound clean. That's when you know you're getting good at this. You can apply this theory to basically any sort of drum sound that has like a membrane in real life, right? Percussion as well, right? Different weird perks. You can do this for snares, tom hits. You can basically build upon this basic theory. Now this kick looks like shit, like I said, but it's fine. Alrighty. So before I finish, I also want to say that the tools that you use don't matter, especially when you're a beginner. I know you have this sort of feeling that you need a lot of the advanced stuff to make good shit. But let me just tell you something. I When I started off, I just used the demo for FL. I couldn't save my music. Um, <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I would record it and that was it for that song. I would never ever work in it again. I would use free trials for everything, right? I would use the stock FL stuff for a long time and make do with it and yeah that 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 may be the same for you right if you don't really have the money for it you know a lot of people happen to actually <laughs> do illegal stuff to achieve this which i'm not going to comment on or or say you should do it you know it's your choice <laughs> but i chose not to not to do that lastly i want to say that practice is very important obviously the more you do this the better you'll get at it it took me around a year to consistently make extremely high quality heavy kicks that sound nice have really good profiles everything and it's gonna be with with you as well at the start you may not be the best but as you go on you sort of start learning how to get the sweet spot in your drums for them to sound the way you'd like them so you may not like drums that are so clicky you may like drums that have actually a very specific type of transient you may like drums that are i don't know very short or very long that is all on you that is all on you to learn through experience because a lot of people say, well, yeah, but I, I just want to do it. I don't want to be told to exercise, but exercise is the basis of everything. And that is it for this video. I'm going to be posting another video that is going to be a lot more in depth than this, in which I'm going to show you more advanced ways of making kicks and it's not going to cover these basics. And it's going to show you how to process already existing kicks in interesting ways, how to layer them with acoustic drums, what you can do for your transients to sound interesting, interesting compression methods, distortion methods, layering, I think I said that already, whatever. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Do consider subscribing if you enjoyed this and leave a like and a comment or whatever because i'm going to be posting more like i said and i'm doing my best and thank you yet again for being here and learning and choosing to learn <laughs> so yeah until next time see ya